The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here, SB Trade Desk. It is the 29th of November, just about into the last month of the year here. And before I get started, uh, what's up, uh, Jeha and Michael? How are you? Assuming you guys can hear me and that you can see the chart. Just let me know real quick that indeed you can so that I'm not talking to myself. Thomas says, yes, we can hear and see. Great. All right. So I've got a lot to run through. I am glad that I waited. Um, I know, sorry for the last minute kind of delay. Uh, yesterday, I was sitting there and it's like, man, I don't have a lot to sit here and say. Um, and obviously that, that change, you know, this is going to be a much better webinar than if I would have done it uh, yesterday. So this is the dollar index, right? This is the chart from last night. We are sitting at, uh, you know, the short term channel line. And again, it's a good sign that we overnight see where we stopped right on this high. Uh, obviously a good sign that we turned down from that center channel line here yesterday and you know looking for the break right sound like a uh, beating a dead horse here but uh, looking for the breakdown in um, in DXY <clears throat> obviously this could be you know mostly euro so um, looking for the breakdown if we do you know end up breaking down you've got the four hour uh, 200 average here about 96.50 but really the big level the next level on the downside if we if we break here is probably going to be around uh 9570 okay that's going to be uh the center line of this channel so this is the channel that goes all the way back to the lows in february right and you know we kind of had resistance on the upper parallel here um but the center line there is going to be the next spot that's you know with support in mid october uh ultimately I'd be looking for a much bigger drop, right? Uh, but that's just the first spot, okay? To know for you know maybe a maybe a bounce or something. Um, looking at the other dollar index, let's go to the daily. So this all the parallels based on the 2011, 2014 trend line that we've been looking at forever, and you know, amazingly, right? We've literally spent, I mean, really since June, um, almost half a year, we've spent most of the time between these two parallels. And this blue, this blue parallel down here, which uh, kind of identified itself as support back in September of 2017, right? That is kind of your big decision point in this index. And that's going to be about, you know, 12,170 or so, which you're going to have a high there from July. Okay. So you can see that big level. It's pretty clear on this chart where your, you know, your point of contention is, uh, if you will, for, uh, for, for US dollar. So that's where I'm looking. Um, that is where, oh, sorry. That is where I think you could see a bounce, but get below there. And again, I'd be looking for a much deeper drop, right? I'm looking down probably towards the 11 900s, uh, and which at this point is below the 200 day average. So, you know, we're looking ahead here again, one step at a time. Uh, that's critical in these markets, right? Very newsy type of markets. Um, but hold on here for a second. I got to put something through. Okay. All right. Sorry, I just had to put through a trade there. Um, all right. 
So that's where we're looking at on US dollar. So I'm not going to spend much time on these charts. We know exactly where we're looking. Um, you know, we've been turning over or trying to turn over for seemingly forever uh, in the dollar generally. And, you know, maybe with yesterday's move, we finally got something. Um, you know, the various currencies will go to euro right now. Got a great entry last night, um, triggered literally right on the low, right? So this is, you know, pretty cut and dry, folks. We are looking towards probably the 1560, 1570 region in euro initially. Um, two equal legs from the low down here. Uh, earlier this month puts you at 1523 and that is in line with these old lows right all the way back to june um may actually late may so you got may june july uh september you know i'm not thinking too much about where to get out at this point um let's let it work and you know see what we can get out of it but uh this 1520 to 1570 area is probably your your big point on the upside for euro at this, you know, uh, in the near term, right? We go to a bigger, longer term chart of euro. And this is really, could be really something. I mean, massive, massive, massive base and pitchfork. And ultimately, you know, we could be looking at, you know, not to get crazy here, but, um, you know, up towards 117.50s, 200 day average, parallels. And beyond that, you know, 120 plus. But again, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, I just love this setup. So it's been, we've had to kind of keep our head on a swivel here, um, trying to get in this Euro trade, but with minimized risk. Uh, because, you know, look, there's a saying, right? Trade what you, what you, uh, trade what you see, not what you think, right? So I've been thinking for some time now that, you know, euro is going to come up out of this, you know, big support level, um, you know, back in August, kind of thought we maybe had an inverse head and shoulders, went to a new low, false breakdown. And, you know, we've been in and out of the euro longs, you know, how many times over the last couple of months, kind of scratching out, you know, a few pips here and there. One of these days, we're going to get, a, you know, we're going to get a sustained move. Um, and that brings me to. The seasonals. So DXY seasonals, after this week, we enter one of the most bearish periods of the year for the dollar. Um, that you know, you can see it from this chart here, the seasonals. This is a 30 year. You got five, 10 and 15 year seasonals down here. They all turn down. Um, the five year seasonals, obviously a little more bullish looking because we've been in a bull market for the most part for five years in the dollar. But we can look at it a different way, too. So. If we put up. We want to look at December. We're just going to run a test on what it looks like if you were to buy the euro or sorry, buy the dollar at the end of November, the first day of uh, December every um, every year and then, you know, sell out. At the end of the month. This is what it looks like. That's about as bearish as you can get, right? So here are the stats. You've got uh, 43 months, right, since the end of Bretton Woods, 1971. And 17 of those are up months, 26 down, 40% winning percentage. But here's the kicker, right? Average winning trade, average, average losing trade. The average loser, in other words, the average loss for the dollar is twice as large as the average gain. So you're looking at one a dollar thirty, so that's 1.3 DXY points to 2.23 on the downside DXY points. 
So, you know, going into the end of uh, the end of the month here um, and going into the end of the year, you really have the wind at our back for downside on the dollar. Okay. Dollar Swiss. I like this on the downside as well. Um, you know, probably not going to get an entry up here at this point, right? Up at 1.0045. Um, but I'm, I'm content to sit with Euro. We've talked about this previously. I'm, you know, kind of like actually Euro uh, on the upside a little better than, than Dollar Swiss on the downside. Several reasons for that, but uh, one is simply the sentiment towards the euro is just so hated. Uh, if anything, just just gives me a little more maybe confidence in looking lower. But this is a fork that's worth following if you're you know bent on trading dollar Swiss itself. Um, watch this because where we bounced here today is the center line, which means once you get below this you're kind of in free fall, right? And probably nothing good until below 98. So, you know, currently 99.50. Uh, if you break 99, you break the center line, nothing till 98. This could help time some Euro stuff uh, generally, but, um, you know, would just be kind of aware of this chart as well. Let's go back and look as well at dollar sec, Swedish Krona. This is a chart from last week. Again, DXY went to new highs up here. Dollar sec never did. Big triangle. Um, I know that triangles, uh, the textbooks say that you're supposed to break out in the direction of the preceding trend, and uh, that's fine. But you can't ignore the behavior here that we continue to fail on the center line. All right, let's move to dollar yen. This is that uh, proposed triangle, okay? And you know, when we look at this, I guess you you know you kind of have to take into account the uh, risk sentiment. It makes a lot of sense when you kind of look at this uh, in conjunction with, say, indices, right? So yesterday's big move higher um, in S and P and the Nasdaq. We'll look at those charts in a little bit, but you know we came into massive resistance, right? A huge level, and um, we're you know we're back on the you know track of dollar yen lower with stocks lower today. But pay attention to you know one twelve seventy five uh, to basically eighty three, right? That is where you'd have proposed wave C um, and proposed wave E would relate by 0.618, right? So this is a pretty clean looking triangle. And if we have another run higher in indices, this is probably where you're going to see support in dollar yen. So we can take it a step further if we want to put in, you know, maybe construct a little trade here. If you do get a bounce in dollar yen from roughly here, we'd probably be looking to short around 113.60s. And you'd be having a stop above, you know, the 14 handle and looking down towards, uh, let's call it 112.80. Okay, so be looking at about 80 pips, um, you know, on the downside for a target with risk at, you know, let's give it 45. So, you know, not the best reward to risk, but there's an idea there, something that, you know, seeing how the rest of the day progresses, we could end up putting a trade through in dollar yen uh, to short a little higher. Here's a short-term channel. You can see where we are, and if we were to come back, you'd be looking right to short right up here, right? Real clean, right up that 1360s. So I'll leave that for now because I might be using that later.
All right. Commodity currencies. Aussie. Uh, still like the idea of buying down here into basically 72.80. You know, what's the alternative? So I've got question marks here just because, look, I'm not sure that this is the completed correction. I mean, it is kind of, it is relatively shallow, um, you know, for a, you know, correction of a five wave advance. You know, you don't have to see a 618 retracement, but, um, you know, it's kind of preferable, I guess. So the alternative is that this is an A, this is a B, and that we're going to tank in a C. and you know, taking into account, say, the uh, the news of the day, I mean, you could very well see something like this, you know, where you get a big dump and see, and then you head higher. I mean, you got G20 this weekend, all this China stuff going on. Um, you know, we're seeing the, you know, Aussie relatively firm today compared to, say, Chinese equities, uh, which, you know, were down pretty big last night. But I still like buying it here. If we get it, uh, just make sure that you have a tight stop because, again, the alternative is that you're down here. Kiwi, right on its 200 day. I'm content to just sit here and kind of observe Kiwi at the time uh, for now because. Not trying to buy into the 200-day average, uh, just probably you know probably not the greatest idea, but we'll sit here and just watch Kiwi for now. Uh, you can see that we did find support on this parallel last night, so you know, gun to my head, being long with a stop literally at 68.35 wouldn't be a terrible a terrible trade, but uh, I'd rather you know play in the uh, Aussie sandbox for the moment. I will say as well that you're going to have um, a pretty big test, probably around 69.30 in Kiwi. All right, this is the trend line off of the highs from this year. And, you know, kind of parallels, remember the, uh, the setup that we like to look at as far as, you know, coming back to the underside of the corrective channel, puts you in the 69.30 to 69.60 range. So you're going to have a big test for Kiwi there. Um, you know, I, don't, I have to say, but generally a dollar a dollar bear, right? So you'd be thinking you're looking higher in Kiwi. That might not be the case, right? We could see a case where, you know, Kiwi trades and resistance comes off. Look at something like Euro Kiwi. Uh, I know we looked at that, I think, last week. And, you know, we started to turn up from a pretty big level in Euro Kiwi. You could count a five wave down here in Euro Kiwi as well, right? Taking out all these lows, wouldn't be surprised to see a pretty good pop in Euro Kiwi, in which case Euro is the better place to be than Kiwi anyway. Dollar CAD. We are sitting short here. Um, got a decent entry last night. We'll see how it plays out. I just tweeted a chart before the webinar um, about, you know, on Western Canadian Select, right? That's the heavy crude that comes out of uh, Canada. And a lot of people I know have been kind of, you know, confounded by the lack of relationship, if you will, between, say, crude oil and, um, in the Canadian dollar, um, not just recently, but really over the last, you know, couple of years, frankly, right? I mean, we've seen crude oil skyrocket and the Canadian dollar do nothing or even go down. We've seen crude oil recently just get destroyed and, you know, Canadian dollar has weakened, right? Dollar CAD's gone higher, but not significantly, right? It hasn't been that big of a move. So that's because people are looking at WTI. And they're looking at, you know, dollar CAD, where you need to be looking at the spread between 
WTI and Western Canadian Select. And we look at that here, okay? So this is that spread. So what this tells you, you can see it's minus 33 right now. What that means is that Western Canadian Select is trading a $33 discount to WTI. So if WTI right now is trading 50, you know, 51 bucks, then we're talking, you know, the Western Canadians at 18, um, $33 discount. So that discount was as deep as 47 bucks back in October. Okay, so the relationship is not always perfect by any means, right? If we look at this here, if I just compare, say, CAD dollar to the spread, you can see there are times when you have a relationship, but there are times when, you know, it's not great. So by definition, there is not a, uh, a perfect relationship here. However, this is a narrative that's in the market right now, so it's something worth paying attention to. Uh, we've seen the spread narrow here recently, um, basically throughout this month, and obviously a lot of that's going to be a function of simply WTI getting absolutely obliterated. But I would be aware of this, and just going forward, right, you do want to know um, the dynamics of you know of the oil trade and the fact that you need to pay attention to Western Canadian Select rather than just WTI. Back to our Canadian dollar, okay. So let's just pretend for a moment that we do have a high in place here. Two legs down, 3190. I know I've got the target at 3175. Um, that might be changed. Um, who knows? We could even get 3120, uh, 3135, 3135 square root level. You've got the low down here uh, from 1116 at 3127, and you would have a 1618 relationship at 3120, and that would also be the lower parallel. But I like the setup. Um, I like trading against this high, right? You can see that the square root level nailed that high yesterday at 33.59 and I've got the bold black line here that is daily reversal resistance again just take your high day of the move and the close of that day is what we call daily reversal resistance okay you see it right here all right so fx wise um, that's about it. I do want to look at a lot of other markets, though. Oh, actually, I wanted to look at Euro Pound. I did forget that. Okay, hold on. So, remember this from last week. Um, this gigantic triangle, two plus years. This might be ready to go for a breakout attempt. So you're currently trading 89. Your breakout target on this is 99.30. That's 618 of the triangle. And by the way, when you're doing triangle measurements, um, this pertains, I guess, you know, specifically to Elliott wave triangles, but this would, you know, this would be an Elliott wave triangle. Um, but you take the B wave and measure off the B wave. So basically 61.8% of the B wave added to the top gets you 99.30. And guess what? That's the Jan 2009 high as well or close to it 9805 so you know you're talking a thousand pips upside here and 
and we just had a five waves up. And I guess you'd call us three waves down, but either way, you got support where you needed to. Um, so this is worth looking at basically now. Um, you know, we'll look at putting a trade through potentially here. This could be a much longer term trade. Uh, or I guess depending on what happens with Brexit, it could be a short term trade because maybe you go that high that quick. I don't know. Um, but yeah, if anything, this tells us that being long euro is a much better place than British pound. All right, let's move on to some commodities uh, and then we'll look at indices. Then I actually wanted to look at some other markets, some other futures markets uh, that I think you might find interesting. All right, so here is WTI, so WTI crude uh, on an hourly chart. The fork off the top with extension parallels on it. Um, you know, we're up two plus percent today, but your test for this rally, about 53 bucks. Okay, so we're currently 51.50. Yesterday, we actually dipped below $50. And this, you see this big blue line over here. That's the that's the kicker. So I don't know if we have a low end or not, like a tradable low. Again, that will be decided around $53. So you get up to 53, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, until then, it's possible that you get another drop down to 47, 48, and here's why. I'm gonna move this out to a weekly chart. This is your channel all the way back to 1986. And you can see that center line is pretty darn important, right? And it's just a shade below $48. By the way, we're trading right around the 200 week average at this point as well. so. Uh, it's a big time, a big moment for crude oil here, irrespective of going to 48 or not, right? We are into a level where, you know, we could get a, a longer standing low. Um, your resistance on this is probably going to be back at 58, 59 dollars. So I would pay attention to crude oil here. Uh, again, 53 is the big level in the short term and 47 or 48 or so uh, just below 48 is going to be your your major 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 support level all right moving on let's take a look at gold The really long-term line from uh, 2008 and 2015 lows. Again, if you have not seen that, just go to the long-term page um, and you'll see where that comes in, but that's this one here, okay? So with this, possibility of something extremely bullish happening um, you could have a one two one two right in which case now you've got another one two so we you know again could be going into a third of a third wave advance here um, I like gold now I like it on the upside you know short term your support probably should be around 1219 you can see that on this chart here right right across there But you get back through the median line um, and kind of, you know, all systems go at that point. And confirmation, by the way, that you would be in a big third wave advance would be if we got, you know, it's going to take some time because you got to wait until you get up through this level here, this channel, right? Then you'd be coming and you look for support on the old, the old corrective channel uh, 
top line. Take a look at copper. I actually think it's copper has been so spiky lately, it's kind of easier to look at it on a closing basis. But you can kind of see you've got this big neckline here um, going back to September. Copper could be quite, you know, a power could be a, a powerful move to the upside here. Although I'd be wary of the 200-day average at 290. So you know, again, this kind of it's very similar to the Aussie dollar in that. You've got this bullish setup, um, but there's levels just above that, you know, could be problematic on the long side. All right, let's look at indices for now. So we've come off um, some here in the NASDAQ. If we got another pop, say over the next day, I'd be looking at 69.60. And this is NAS 100, right? This is the CFD, um, which, you know, was, as we've talked about a lot, is essentially futures, right? It's like a blend of futures and spot. Um, so it kind of has, you know, the trend lines are a little different. So, you know, you look here. Your trend line for resistance is beautiful up here at 69.60. If you look at, say, the composite, it's a little different, right? Your trend line would be all the way up here, right? And then if we look at just futures itself, this is going to be you know, more similar to um, to the CFD. Either way, it's pretty darn clear that we have entered a peer, uh, a, you know, a spot that's contentious to say the least. So heading into this weekend, uh, you've got big gap risk on either side. Frankly, um, you know, we could go, you could come back down here, 6760, which is where I'm looking for support. Uh, down at 6760 uh, and resistance up at 6960. So uh, remains to be seen. You know, the resolution of the larger move, you know, at this point, just looking at this chart uh, and looking at indices generally, you know, the crash thing that we've been that we had looked at the comparative that's out of the window. Right. That's no longer. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't go down. Right. You can go into a bear market or go into a declining market without going into a crash. Right. So just because the crash things off the table does not mean that the market can't trade lower. And at this point, you know, this is um, massive resistance. I mean, you dropped, you broke the trend line. You're coming back. Just think of it as any regular setup. And now we're, you know, back to test the validity of that downtrend or that break, if you will. <clears throat> You know, perspective gets lost a lot, too. Um, you know, if we go back to and look at, say, a longer term chart on the Qs, let's not forget, we've traded into the top of the pitchfork all the way back to 2002.
you know, so the near term gyrations and all the newsy headlines and everything are what people pay attention to. I get that. But let's not forget where we've come from. OK, not only at the top of the pitchfork, but also the one six one eight uh, relationship of the entire decline from the tech bubble high. I think that we still go back to this 120 level at some point, which is the old tech bubble high, and it's pretty close to the center line as well of the entire pitchfork. So let's not be too short sighted. All right, looking at the S&P. Got to love this chart. Shift fork from the 2009 low. I'd say that we have entered a pretty big test, wouldn't you? I mean, look at that. Look at that red parallel. It's a beauty. So again, if we could get a little more of a pop, you get about 2750. You know, which is in uh, 20, 20 points, currently 2732. You know, basically since I started this webinar, we've already rallied 10. So, you know, we could be there by the end of the day. We could be there tomorrow. You now, how is it, by the way, that you go into this weekend risk stuff and it seems like um, every time you have some big, you know, market moving or potentially market moving event, you end up going into it sitting right at a huge, huge, huge level. It just never fails. So like I said yesterday, as far as the um, looking for maybe support, right, we already know where the resistance is. Okay, we're kind of there, but, you know, you could push one more time. Um, but for support, you know, my focus is more or less on on the NASDAQ for where support would be just because the it's so much cleaner where you had resistance within the parallel. Right. So just watch this parallel. Right. It's probably going to be down around sixty seven fifty two. So. Perfect world, we pop a little higher here, and then we come back in and get to 67.50. S&P, where does that put you? I don't know. I'd watch this trend line off the lows. It's a bit steep, but that's where I'd pay attention to. Um, you know, probably around 2,700, 2,705, but those are your levels. You know, one step at a time. Let's not make grand conclusions at this point. Just know that these are the levels that we need to pay attention to and need to be aware of. OK. China, this is FXI. Trying to find some support here, it seems. Looking towards 4280 and then we'll you know see what the. Uh, what the market wants to do, but. That's your big test. Just a trend line off the highs from January, right? January, June highs. You can see within the, the parallels or you can't get any cleaner than that. And this is basically the ETF version of the um, Shanghai composite. Trend line from 1996. Is that red line? Sitting between a rock and a hard place here, folks. This is your fork all the way back to um, 2007 center line. You can see has saved China from, you know, big bear markets in 2016. And again, this year you get back below this and watch out. So again, heading into G20, you've got a market, probably the most important one in terms of, you know, possible outcomes between all the, you know, the so-called trade war and everything else. In a situation where 
a lot has to be resolved. I mean, this to me is an extremely bearish chart, but that changes quickly if you get back over the highs from, um, you know, mid-month. So we'll keep abreast of this one uh, as well. Kelly, he's got to run. Thanks for your tweets and guidance for a great week. Hey, Kelly, absolutely, my friend. And uh, have a great rest of your week. What's left of it? And a great weekend. Ooh, the Nikkei is one that we haven't really looked at either today. So with this, um, I still think you could get some more upside here. So if we got two legs up from the low in October, that puts you at 22,950. Okay, um, that level is huge. Look at it, just you know, horizontal basis. 22,950. Ding, 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 ding. So you get up to that level, it's probably a sell. Obviously, we're currently 22,280. Resistance around 22,5, pull back, and then maybe look to 22,950. So, um, you know, some good upside targets in some of these indices, but then you probably want to be turning into a bear at that point. Okay, I said I wanted to look at some other markets, right? Some other futures markets. <clears throat> Hey, right on cue, dollar yen is turning up. Pay attention to 112.60-ish uh, for resistance here in dollar yen. Okay, so here are um, a couple markets that I would pay attention to if you trade other markets. Pay attention to sugar. You've got a big head and shoulders bottom potentially basically from April. So we're talking a seven month head and shoulders bottom. If you turn back above 14, you've got a target at basically 18, which obviously from 14 to 18 is a big, big move. All right. Um, when we look at the longer term chart of sugar, Oops, wrong one. Here we go. This is a long-term chart of sugar. Okay, this is a trend line from 1999. That's where we bottomed in October. And oh, by the way, we are in a seasonally bullish period for sugar. Maybe it's everyone buying sugar to uh, make Christmas cookies or something. I don't know. But we've come off a huge level. Um, you can see a bear trap from failed head and shoulders, possibly, whatever, breakdown, bear trap. And now you've got this, you know, head and shoulders look, if you will, to this chart from April. So uh, coming off long term level with a potentially, you know, explosive trigger pattern for sugar. Here's soybeans. This is obviously uh, front and center with the Chinese situation um you know triangle since july and you could make the case that you're into the end of this triangle that this is an a b c d e and that we're about to go straight down um but you kind of have to go with the break here okay if we look at The soybeans chart, that kind of fits that what I just described kind of fits with getting another drop down into, say, 776 and testing the low from December of 2008. And this is your soybean chart all the way back to the 70s, which is one giant channel. 
and this is the parallel that you'd be looking to buy at some point. So paying attention to soybeans here as well. Natural gas. Channel from 2005. We gapped through the median line and then the market went straight to five bucks almost, 495, and currently um, consolidating. So when I looked at, when I saw it, did, did, by the way, I have to ask, did anybody see the ridiculous video of the guy that ran the hedge fund that got blown up because he was um, short, um, he was short calls on, on, on natural gas? Unreal. Writing naked calls, not a good idea. And he figured that out the hard way. But if we look at this chart on a short term basis, A, B, C, D, this drop looking for um, a low in wave E of this triangle. I'd look at about 427. OK, for natural gas. And then you've got a target on a break on the upside. First one's about 558, but I think you could actually get up to the 660s. 660s is the 2014 high right here and 2618 of the triangle. And this being natural gas, you know, you kind of have to respect the potential for outsized moves. And finally, platinum. So this is a platinum chart. We got essentially ticked on the uh, 2008 low. And the jury's still out here on this, but what I would pay attention to on platinum is this very simple line right here. Like we're there, right? So if platinum can uh, maybe put in some ink down here and try to find some support, you've got a hell of an opportunity for upside from a very, 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 very long-term support um, level, the 2008 low. 618 is a shade below there as well. So I know we, we don't look at uh, a lot of other markets, but I did want to bring it to your attention because there are some great opportunities out there um, in the other other world, not just in FX, right? All right, so I have covered pretty much all I've got, but we've got a couple more minutes left if there are questions, um, you know, and feel free to ask, you know, whatever. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be about um, FX or indices. We could, you know, we can talk about anything. I pretty much follow everything. Marco, Dollar Swiss. You got it, my man. So Dollar Swiss So remember on the longer term chart, right? I think that we just well, we just saw this potentially false breakout on dollar Swiss. Hold on. Right here we go. So the false breakout over here, right? So you've got massive downside potential because you had a false break. And again, we are going into December, which is a seasonally bearish period. Um, but near term, following this. So thought maybe 10050 or so would be resistance. We didn't get there. I don't think you'll get there at this point, but I could you know, obviously be wrong there. Uh, if you did, I'd pay attention. But really, your trade here, in my opinion, is... 
a break below 99 because it's not just breaking a horizontal level at that point. At that point, you're breaking um, the median line, which is important because it was just support actually um, today. So you break below that, your first target is going to be the lower parallel, which is roughly 98, 97, 90. And then, you know, kind of take it from, uh, from, from there, right? So be looking down here. Hey, Mohammed, how are you? I'm um, asking if this webinar will be archived. Absolutely, it will be archived. Um, and you say, how can I get Michael's uh, webinar today? Sure, so let me take you to the site. So whenever you go to the site, you go to the members page, right? You'll see all of the um, archive stuff on the right side, okay? Um, Michael's webinar, he may not have archived it yet because if he archived it, it would just be right here. You'd see it. So it's probably not up yet. Um, but when it does, when he does post it, it will be, it will show up right here. Okay. So you'll see it. Any, anything new that's posted, whether it's my stuff or Mike's stuff, you see it right on the right side under recent posts. All right. And he'll also tweet it to um, you know to the private Twitter feed all right you're quite welcome crude got some rally legs here all right, is there anything else that you guys want to look at? All right. All right, well, I'm going to archive this. It should be up in about 30 minutes or so. Um, oh, Mohammed, say, can we check Euro? Sorry, I was late. Absolutely, man. All right, so with Euro, I looked at a couple things. One, we got triggered on the entry basically at 30, well, 1350, right? 1345 is a big level. Maybe you come back there and test it again. I don't know. But, you know, I'm looking higher in Euro now. Okay. Uh, Mohammed, the level we're looking towards is 1520 to 1570. 1570 is just this bottom side of this trend line. 1520 is two legs up and all these old lows. So, you know, that's where focus is on uh, on euro. Now, longer term, it's quite possible that we just saw a gigantic low. All right. You can even see it better on a weekly chart. I mean, we had the 200 week average. We got this trend line. You got the lower parallel. It's a beauty of a chart. I know it's been really frustrating the last couple of weeks and months um, thinking that we're going to move higher out of this. But after the action we've seen lately, right? Obviously showing support. I mean, just a beauty of a chart here. Reversals right off the, you know, 200 week average, right off support lines. And eventually, you know, I think you probably get up into the one close to 120 at some point. And sounds crazy, but that could even happen in December, um, given the seasonal stuff that goes on uh, with the dollar. All right. Uh, Christopher Whitney, how you doing? It's got a question here. What do you think on the 10-year yield? Let's take a look. We'll look at the 10-year yield, and we can also look at the uh, futures contract on uh, the 10-year. All right. We've got uh, – I think it's on this one. All right. 10-year yield. Trend line from 1981, 200-month average. I think risk is to the downside on the 10-year yield. Now, let 
we look at the futures, hold on here. You look at the futures, we are right at the 200 day average. And this is a really big point because, you know, those that have been, me, uh, been with me for a while know one of my favorite setups is this right here. So what you're looking at is a correction to this point. Once you trade outside of the, you know, channel top, that tells you that you're in an impulsive move, okay? And then what you do is you look for an extension to the channel width, right? Seen this on how many different markets, right? We've seen this happen on, you see it happen on, so I'm always showing examples of this. So, you know, you're right here, 119, you're looking towards 121, uh, probably 121.10. Right now, this is a bit of a hairy situation because you are right at the 200 day average. So, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, go plow into the 10 year, but frankly, your setup is long here. This is a breakout day and your stop is right there. So I like uh, yields lower. I like, um, you know, notes higher. Here's the bond. I like bonds higher. Um, I know that you've seen the TLT chart. We called for a low in the special report back at, what was it, October 13th. We were looking for a low down near um, 111.90, and lo and behold, guess what happened? We made a low at 111.90. Here's that chart. This is TLT, so this is your ETF version, basically, of the 30-year. And look where we found support. It's really, really a thing of beauty. So... I'm looking towards 118 roughly in uh, TLT, which, you know, all the charts are kind of saying the same thing. Question is, are we higher from here or do we need another another pullback within this, um, you know, this base, if you will? I'm not so sure. It's not as clean here for me. But yeah, Christopher, I hope that helps. Um, the longer term chart of the 10 year yield right into resistance and we're coming off of it. So yeah, looking lower. All right. I got to run. Everyone, thank you for your time. As always, much appreciated um, and have a great rest of your day and rest of your week. And I'll have this archived ASAP. All right, take care.